Hi everyone, so today we will be doing some urban sketching and I have prepared the reference photo. It's a church that I took a photo of um, on our recent walk. So, uh, and I'm using Canto Meton paper. This is the smooth side because when you're doing, um, when you need to do small details um, that are important when you're doing sketches of um, cities, it's very important that you have a smooth surface so that you are able to actually add those details, otherwise you won't be able to do that on the textured surface. So this is a flannel gray. I like this color the most, you know that already by now, I think. This is the church, and what I want to focus on is the steeple. So I don't want to do all of it, I just want to do this um, detail uh, that is on top of this tower. So. Very important things when you are doing sketches of cities and um, buildings, you have to pay attention to the perspective. I'm using a dark brown pencil and I have it sharpened to a sharp point. And in this sketch, we will be using um, this kind of a more graphic approach. So the lines that we will be doing will have accents at the tips and they will get lost kind of in the middle. So we're going to be working in these lines that give this kind of uh, more live feel to our sketch. So I will start by approximately measuring where I want my the tip of my, the, the ball that is somewhere here there's going to be this ball on top of my tower and then i think i'm going to finish it off somewhere around here so you can do this in two ways a more academical way which does not involve these live lines and there you draw out perfectly according to the perspective or you can add a bit more life to it and even if you have some minor errors um, perspective wise if you don't get the line exactly where you need it it will look still um, more pleasing, more alive. So let's start. So here I'm measuring, now I'm looking at my reference image. Ooh, I was measuring and I moved the camera. So on an outstretched hand, I'm measuring with my pencil on the reference image, how high up this little ball on top is going to be. So it's basically going to be the same as the width um, from the top, the same distance as the width of the tower itself. So if I say that this is the distance, actually this is too few, let's take it just a bit larger. So this is the distance between the top of this ball that is on top, we're not looking at the cross on top there, but between the top of this ball and the corner that is closest to us, it's going to be the same as the width of our tower. So here I will start by pinpointing that corner. And then we have to pay attention that it kind of goes slightly inwards, this area. It's kind of curved a bit. So this is one. And then we go all the way down for now. So barely touching the paper, I'm creating this um, plane that is closest to us. So then I see that I have this width now, which is going to be approximately like so. So the tower is going to be approximately this thick. And as I took a photo from this, um, it's called the first position, I think, in the squares, when you're drawing squares. So basically, these sides are equal. So the tower itself is square, and both of these sides should be equal. So I think if we make it this large, it's going to work. And I am looking at the angle. If we put a straight line here, I'm looking at these angles where the tip of this tower, um, of this square is. So just to get the perspective right. And here I'm going to already draw out the top square of my tower, very lightly. Then from here, I'm looking that just slightly um, 
taller than it is wide is this um, part of the tower that creates kind of a square so here where the windows are and I'm looking that it's almost as tall as it is wide so I'm measuring it that way so I'm making it just a bit taller because it's not a complete square and the same way here as I'm going to the perspective I'm drawing the perspective that goes just a bit more horizontal so basically there's this rule when you're drawing that any line that is closest to the horizon closer to the horizon becomes more horizontal so this is just the rule of perspective so I'm creating this second area now I see that here this area here comes out a bit because as we said this part here is kind of curved so we have to show that so we're showing this curved area like so and then going down so now we have this cube you can measure from the side of your paper to make sure that your lines are vertical if your lines are not vertical it's going to look as if the tower is leaning this is what we're going to do when we're going to draw pizza tower <laughs> by the way i have photos of that one so we're going to be doing that one as well i think if you would like that let me know so now now we have this area here which also steps out a bit so we're going from this point and we're taking just slightly it steps out less than that one so just a bit we move it out so this is very important when you're drawing buildings all these tiny details you have to pay close attention to them because when you are drawing a building the silhouette and all the details that are on this building are its portrait basically treat it like a portrait of a person and here again we're going inwards I'm eyeballing how thick this part actually is like so then we have this area that goes down and also this one goes down straight and here already I don't care about this bottom area because I want to focus the attention on this upper part so now what do we do now now we need to create um, there is another detail here so we need to connect these parts that are the bottom of this curvature and we see these kind of squares on each corner like so now this inner part of these um, of this top square of our tower has this area slightly kind of dented inwards so what I'm doing is I'm slightly creating this little um, indentation so it's lower than the corners another important thing pay attention that I'm focusing my strongest accents on the areas where the lines meet so our eyes are built in such a way that we connect the line even if it's not connected if we have two dots our eye is going to try to create that connection so very important to accentuate those areas next I see that under there there is another level of this um, square going around that kind of juts out so this is the other level and I'm sketching it in the same way So it's right under our first part. So I'm going to sketch that one in. And now here at the corners where we see that this actually fits into the wall, it goes, so 
here we have this part that juts out and here it has also kind of a thicker um, wall and then it kind of dents inwards like so so it goes like so then there's thicker part here so this is what we need to show now I'm going to take my pencil again and just put a vertical line down and immediately that gives us um, a feeling of this thickness the same goes here but we don't see it as much what we do see is the connection between these two walls this one and that one so we will need to show that one too so we need to separate these two a bit like so next we have this part that juts out more here there and we do the same thing over here as well so just by the by adding this vertical line we're showing already with the pencil we're showing kind of um, thickness to our wall How, I washed my hands because I was drawing in pastels before I started to record the tutorial <laughs> but still dirty Need to clean them good so now we have this part let's continue with our tower further on just gonna intensify this area here and I see that this line continues here as well but there is another kind of a square shaping here it starts from not from underneath this part that juts out it's slightly curvy but there is kind of a square shaping here and we're going down like so the same way I'm pressing more where I see that there's a shadow so here I'm barely adding this line do the same thing here barely adding this line because it's quite um, light and here as it's in the shadow we can press a bit harder so already by the thickness of my lines I am creating the illusion of depth okay so now we go with this one down again and here we can show approximately where our windows are and in my mind I'm continuing this line up until this point and then in the same perspective I'm creating this line also on this side so always pay attention to the perspective now now we have to do the windows so how do we do that for the windows they are kind of um, with a curve on top but basically they are a square with a curved side so for that square we still need to put it into perspective so I see that there's this kind of um, thing jutting out right before the window starts to curve so we can treat first our window as a square and not look at that curve and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approximately see where that part is jutting out it's approximately here I'm continuing it until here and do the same thing in the same perspective that I drew these lines in and these lines everything has to coincide and I'm adding it here here I just put this line so you could see it but I'm just gonna remove it now because we don't need it and this is the part that actually juts out like so now we can continue creating our window so this window is quite tall actually I think I took it a bit too tall but it's fine and here I'm looking how wide it is so this is gonna be approximately my window and here already we can curve it doing the same thing here and we can curve it so then the windows have a thickness so that's very important here and also there's a bit that's jutting out here as well like so so the windows themselves have a thickness and here we can clearly see this thickness the walls are quite thick so this is the thickness of my window and here this thing it kind of goes inwards the thing that juts out 
like so. And we do the same thing over here. We're looking at that thickness and we're adding that. So one more thing that we have here is the balcony. So I'm deciding that I want my balcony to be approximately at this level and I'm pulling my line and there it is. This is the top edge of my balcony. And then here we can create then those lines in between. The same way in the perspective, I'm drawing out my balcony. The same way here, we have those darker dots that kind of shape in between those um, parts of the balcony. Then we'll, now you can already hatch in the darker edge, uh, the darker inside of the window, sorry. Now we have the windows, the top windows. We do the same thing based on the um, perspective for the bottom windows. So here I see that there is quite a shadow. I'm going to intensify this line a bit. And the windows go approximately at this level. And I'm creating those lines where my windows are going to be. And I have two windows, but I'm going to treat them as one at the moment. And I'm working on the windows on both sides. Very, oop, very important, again, perspective. I cannot stress this enough. You have to put your lines, all of them, in perspective. So here we have a central kind of division line. And this window is going to be slightly a millimeter larger than this one because it's closer to us. Again, perspective. And here we can add that curve. Intensifying these corners again. And the same thing we do here. In these, we almost don't see the inside. So it's quite thick, the wall, and it's quite dark. Now we're going to be adding also some detail here as well. And on these, we can see the inside of the window. So here, I'm again, imagining this line. It goes around here. So this is going to be the top of my windows. There we go. So here I see the thickness of the wall very clearly. The same thickness that we have here basically. And then we have this beautiful detail that kind of um, goes on the windows and follows the perspective goes inside the same one that we have this kind of an element over here and we add it on this side as well goes inside here in the middle and like so okay so we have the tower itself almost done now we're gonna go higher up here, I see that there's this beautiful um, railing going around the top of the tower. And it's one of the very important things that we'll have to add. Again, it's going to follow the perspective. I see that it's wider than the width of the tower, but not as wide as the width of this, um, this edge that's actually jutting out. And this one, I'm actually going to intensify it a lot because it's the closest side to us. So, okay. So here, again, I'm drawing out approximately where this is going to be. And it's going to be, if this is the corner of our part that's jutting out, it's going to be slightly to the right because it's smaller than this square top, the top here of the tower. And again, following the perspective, we're doing the same thing. Touching very lightly. Now, if we look at our tower from the top, so let's sketch it out here. So if this is our square tower, from top, we have these edges that jut out. 
rock them. Like so. This is what we showed. So this is this area here, the edges that jut out. And then this thing, I think it's actually a hexagon. I think it has six sides to it, but we don't have to draw that out. We can draw it as a circle that is smaller than this square that has a steeple here in the center. And then from this steeple here, the lines go down. And I think, I don't know how many there are, but we're going to show the ones that we see. So here, as I already established my proportion, I can start drawing out my um, circle on top here. So I see that these edges are going to be the same distance from the center and they're going to be smaller, so narrower. So I'm paying attention to where this area that juts out begins and then I can start my tower here. So always comparing. Now, as we're looking at it from underneath, all the ovals that we see, so if we imagine that we're looking at an oval, this is, uh, let's say that this is the horizon line. And if we look at an oval that is under, we will have it opening towards us like so with this part thicker here. So it goes towards the horizon line, but we're looking on top, uh, towards the tower from underneath. So our oval is going to look like so. So we're going to have to add an oval here. That has its closest part to us over here. So I hope that makes sense. If it didn't, please, please let me know. I will be very happy to do a lesson on perspective and about ovals because that was one of the parts that I really struggled with in the beginning. And all the years in art school, they <laughs> didn't help a lot. So here we have this oval bit that we see. And it's going to always lie horizontally, remember that thing. Then, from this oval, we have another oval over here. So this is, it's going to be slightly smaller than this one, because um, this area on the steeple, it's going to be narrower than our tower. And from here, it will go something like so. And don't forget that we have the roof jutting out from our circle here. Gone in too much here, but it's okay, we can also correct it with the pastel on top. So this is the roof of our hexagon. I'm not gonna get bothered with counting these edges, but just to give an idea, it has a roof. And then from here, it's going to have this part that we will see up until here and then the ball at the top here and in this point we will have this steeple actually I think I raised it too much we can make it so <laughs> had to take a pause um, I'm seeing this now that I took another look at it, that this kind of cylinder that we have on top is way too high up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lower it just a tad. So this is a kneaded eraser as usual. So I'm going to have this oval going somewhere like so. So remember that this is an oval that has also the backside Okay, and now we can add this edge. So I'm going to divide it in a couple of sections just to show that it's not completely round. So these are the areas where I have my um, this kind of banister thing, how do you call it? And then here we will have this round thing that goes all the way up. 
like so and it has sections so I see this one section that looks at us and it goes this way so as we were talking if we had it here so these are the sections that is divided in this is one section then there's the other one and it kind of pushes slightly out of the silhouette of our circle that is on top we have another one here that kind of juts out slightly and another one that goes all the way like so okay so this is the general silhouette the shapes of my tower now here I have another thing happening so it's probably a cross but I don't see it well and I'm going in the same movements that I did um, lightly touching the paper and that way I have this um, cross just a sketch of this cross so I'm just gonna check once again that everything is perpendicular and we can start adding some color 